Good afternoon, everyone. And it's just lovely to hear the noise there as folk gather in. And it's, uh, it's lovely to see you all. So may I give you all a very warm welcome to this service on this special day, Easter Sunday, when we meet together to worship a living Saviour uh, here in Tobarkey. So if you are a visitor, as I said, you are very welcome. And any joining online, it's lovely to have you with us. A special word of welcome to Mr. Norman McCrack. And Norman, thank you again for coming to lead worship uh, here today and for the many times uh, during our vacancy. We have been blessed through your ministry and we wish you God's richest blessing as you continue to serve, uh, serve him. We do look forward to what God has laid on your heart uh, to share with us. Thank you to the choir for special pieces today and also for leading us each Sunday. Uh, there will be a combined choir practice with Ramon next Sunday at 3 p.m. here in Tobarkey, so your work is not done yet. There will be no midweek this week. The church, the We Church magazine, is ready for collection by the elders. Uh, it's in the minister's room, and if you pick that up after the service, please. The Presbyterian heralds are also available in the vestibule as you leave. There are some invitations for the installation on the 28th of April available in the vestibule. So if you would like some uh, to give to any family member or friend, uh, please pick one up or see uh, either Harry or Christopher or Anna there at the door as you leave. Uh, and some church invitations have already been sent. So if you think anyone you are inviting could have already received an invite, would you please check with me to try and avoid duplication. Please also feel free to invite anyone by word of mouth and they will be most welcome. With regards catering for the installation, there will be a meeting here in Tobruky on Tuesday the 18th of April at 8 p.m. And that's for anyone interested in helping with this and any queries, would you please speak to Rosie. Can I ask also that you prayerfully consider our special April offering uh, that we take up each year and the envelopes for this are available in your free will offering pack. And speaker for next Sunday, the 16th of April, God willing, will be Mr. Jonathan Galt. Thank you. Thank you, Jim, for your kind welcome. I always enjoy joining you for worship here in Tobarkey. In Matthew 28, we read, He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. The choir is going to lead us now. I know that my Redeemer lives.
Thank you, Audrey and the choir. Now we're going to all stand and worship God. Heaven 435, Jesus Christ is risen today. <coughs> come before God in prayer. Let us all pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this special day. Every year when we remember that morning all those years ago, when you defeated death and claimed victory over the grave by walking out of Joseph's tomb. Lord, we are truly thankful for all you endured for each one of us by taking the punishment we deserved on that cruel cross. So today in a state of adulation, we fall at your feet to know that because you rose again from the dead, we too will rise one day and be with you forevermore where we only to submit to you. 
Father, move in our hearts this resurrection morning to come to you in a state of repentance for our sins and receive the forgiveness you so willingly pour out on all who come. Father, we thank you for this time of year when so much of your amazing creation is bursting into life again. We think of that fish, the mackerel, after spending the winter in the Norwegian Sea, will be somewhere near the Outer Hebrides on their 4,000 mile journey back to breed just off our shores in the Atlantic Ocean how they find their way by the earth's magnetic field is too much for us to take in. But you know, Lord, and you implanted these homing skills into so many of your wonderful creatures. Thank you, Father, for the epic journey you made, leaving the glory of heaven to come all the way down to earth to rescue us. What love. What grace. What a sacrifice. Thank you. Lord Jesus, come to us today. Inhabit the praise of your people. And send us from this sanctuary more grateful for the salvation you bought for us at a huge cost, ready to serve you in the week ahead. Hear our prayer, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. The choir are going to lead us again. May the peace of God...
Thank you. Boys and girls, you only come up to the front and I'll see you down there. Morning, afternoon, sorry. How are we? Good. How's the school holidays going? Great. You're saying great, the teacher's saying great, and the parents are saying another week to go, yeah. Be back Monday week. Just one week off, but that's is that right? Yeah. You have two weeks off. Oh, it's great. Well, have you ever, have you been anywhere nice? Have you anybody been to Poor Rush? No. Valley Castle? No. It's time you sort yourselves out. Get yourself an ice cream in Bally Castle from the dessert bar. Yep. You ask for a small one and it's about this size. Oh, I love the dessert bar. Right. We're always going places, aren't we? We're always going places. We're going to church. We're coming home from church. We're going to school. We're coming home from school. Going places. Did you? Causeway's class. Did you walk right round? Did you climb up the big steps? Yeah. Oh my goodness, the causeway is lovely. I haven't been there in a while. Okay, we're always going places. Tell me this, do you know what one of these is? A pen? No. Balloon? Look at it, it's a bit dead and lifeless, isn't it? What would you do to make it better? Right. Should I blow it up? It's a sausage. Here, if you can get a sausage that size, I'm going to that my fry. Right. It's a better shape now, isn't it? It's in the shape it was meant to be because it was filled with air. Okay. Right. I need two volunteers. <laughs> How am I going to pick? Right. I'm going to pick you because you're at that end. I'm going to pick you because you're at that end. Come on up. Sorry to everybody else. Right. What you're going to do, you're going to, can you hold something really tight? Don't let this go. Okay? Don't let it go. Really, really tight. All right? Right. And I'm going to have to blow one up for you now, too. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh. I'm going to get off the next time the floor comes round. <laughs> right, can you hold something really tight? Right, really tight. Now, the balloons are in the shape they're meant to be. What would happen if we let them go? Don't let them go. <laughs> would they fly away? Right, so, you two are going to go up into the pulpit, okay? And after three, you're going to let them go. Okay, up you go. And I will we'll count these down. All right? But before you do that, I want you to guess where it's going to land. Where's yours going to land? On that side. And where's yours going to land? Right. Point them up the way, yep, yeah, like that, and let them go. Point yours up. Point, point yours up the same. That's it. Right. One, two, three. <laughs> My goodness. Right. Come on down again. Thank you. Oh my goodness. Wasn't that good fun? Have you used a seat again? Thank you. Thanks for your help. Now you look at the balloon. It's back to being empty. Lifeless. No, because I have enough puff left. I have to save all my puff for the sermon. Right. It got me thinking a wee bit, that's a bit like us. Okay, going places. When God made us, he formed us out of the dust of the ground and blew into us the breath of life. Man came alive. 
when God made us, he blew the breath of life into us. Can you imagine God breathing the breath of life into you? God knew you would be here today because he breathed the breath of life into you. He knew even before you were born that you were going to be here. Isn't that amazing? There's a wee baby even before it's born. God knew what that baby was going to be like, what it would do even before it was born. That's amazing. That's amazing. So, that means God can be trusted. He'll know everything about us. We might know what we're doing tomorrow, but maybe in a couple of years' time we'll not know. But God knows. So you can trust God for the future. All right? And we're always going places. Now, there's one thing we could do to a balloon that would make it not go down again. What would that be? Yes? <coughs> well, as they used to say in Blue Peter, here's one I made earlier. Okay? It's tied up. How can that go places now? You'd have to kick it, wouldn't you? It can't go anywhere on its own. It has to be kicked or hit or blown by the wind. There's a lot of wind today. That would fly today, I think. Okay? But that there is a wee bit like us taking all the gifts God has given us and closing our mouth, putting our hands in our pockets, tying our feet together. Imagine all the gifts the people here today, like the singing in the choir, if they kept their mouth shut, we wouldn't get their gifts. God gives us gifts not for us, they're for other people. You know, a gift is only a gift when you give it away. God gives, gives us gifts to give away. So don't be like the empty balloon trying to get through life on your own. Don't be like the tied up balloon keeping all the gifts God has given you to yourself. Keep coming back to God, being filled with his, his air, his breath of life. Because you know what? You see, if you give your heart to Jesus, you give your heart to Jesus, one day you'll be really going places. Okay? It's going to fly away, yes. One day you'll be really going places if you give your heart to Jesus. Because look, Jesus says, in my, there's plenty of room for you in my Father's home. I'm on my way there to get a room ready for you and I'll come back and get you so you can be with me. Okay? Isn't that a lovely verse? So give your heart to Jesus, and you'll be really going places. Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you for these boys and girls. We pray a special blessing on them today, on this resurrection day, that they would know you in a real and special way. Lord, speak to them. Bless their families and their homes, and bless all who minister to them here in Toberkey. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now we're going to sing. There's is it the green hill there? Yeah, there's a green hill far away. Let's sing to God again.
choir is going to lead us again. It was finished upon the cross. The, sorry, we'll have our offering first. Sorry. Let's come before God in prayer. Now thank we all our God with heart and hand and voices who wondrous things has done 
in whom this world rejoices. Who from our mother's arms has blessed us on the way with countless gifts of love and still is ours today. Living God, when we consider how you have watched over us with love since the day we were born, we are humbled before a mighty God. We present our offering out of a grateful heart, asking you to bless it, multiply it, and use it in whatever way you deem fit. Build your church. In our prayers for others today, we remember brothers and sisters throughout the world suffering at the hands of evil people. We think of those caught up in the war in Ukraine again. Lord, we pray that you would intervene and bring a swift end to this conflict so there be no further loss of life. We lift before you all who suffer persecution for the name of Jesus. Many thousands are living in fear of their lives and are forced to meet in secret to worship you. Many others are being tortured as we speak rather than denounce the name of Christ. Father God, would you give these people a special dose of your love and compassion today. May they have the courage to keep the faith in their extremely challenging circumstances. We pray for all parents in these difficult days of bringing up children to love and honour you. O oh Lord, there are so many distractions and very attractive ones at that. Please keep our children and young people safe from harm and protect them from the evils of alcohol, drugs and the internet. Give all parents a special anointing of wisdom as they bring up their children in the way that they should go so that when they are old they would not depart from you. Father, I pray today for the fellowship here in Toberkey as they and Ramon will install a new minister later this month. Lord God, I pray for complete unity among the members that they would get behind the Reverend Philip McKelvey and encourage and support him and pray for him every day in the kingdom work he will do. Bless one and all in this new chapter of ministry in the days ahead. And may many come to know Jesus as their own personal Lord and Saviour. Build your church, Father, in this place. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Take your Bibles or your phones, please, and turn to Mark chapter 16. We're going to read the first eight verses. It's a real privilege to join you on this special day. Mark chapter 16, beginning with the first verse. This is the word of the living God. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James, and Salome bought spices so they could make go to anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb. And they asked each other, who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man, dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. 
Don't be alarmed, he said. You're looking for Jesus the Nazarene who was crucified. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. Trembling and bewildered, the woman went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. We thank God for his holy word. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, as we turn to your word now, would you come and give us eyes to see, ears to hear, minds to understand, and hear your still small voice, not mine. Lord, may your name be glorified. Speak personally to each and every one of us. In Jesus' name. Amen. You've all heard it, no doubt, when some people who want to refer to God in a conversation but don't want to use his name, they utter ridiculous phrases like, you know who I mean, him up there, or your man upstairs. You find that people who use that phrase are uncomfortable saying the Lord's name and will almost always never use the name of Jesus other than in a swear word. I believe the reason many folk in the West have difficulty putting their faith in Christ Jesus is because they don't personalize him. So we have arrived at Easter Sunday, the pinnacle day of the Christian calendar. In fact, were it not for this day over around 2,000 years ago, we wouldn't be here. Last Sunday, Palm Sunday, we left Jericho and we joined the masses as Jesus entered Jerusalem for the last time. We've been through Holy Week and no doubt many, hopefully all of you, have had your daily reflections of our Saviour's journey to Calvary. Today, a criminal's death on a cross for you and me. Now we come to this most beautiful of days, Resurrection Sunday. For the last couple of days, all the folks around Jerusalem would have been talking about was the death of Jesus, their leader. Tell me this, if I was to begin talking about death, how would it make you feel? Or if I was to ask you, are you ready to die? What would you say? I think perhaps we don't give this enough thought. And I'm probably as guilty as the next person. It's a bit like kicking the can down the road. Teacher asked his pupils, who wants to go to heaven? Everyone in the class put their hand up, except we Johnny. The teacher asked him, Johnny, do you not want to go to heaven? Oh, yes, I do, miss. Well, why didn't you put your hand up? To which Johnny replied, Oh, I thought you meant now. <laughs> Is that where you are today? Oh, I'll think about it when I'm older. But the truth is, folks, death is inevitable. I wonder, do ministers, pastors and Bible teachers realize the full extent of their calling before God is to prepare people for death? Not a very pleasant subject to talk about, but it's coming to us all, maybe even quicker than we think. If we were to take the average lifespan of a UK resident, which currently stands at 80.9 years, say 81 years, and divide it up into a 24-hour day to see roughly how much life we've left, it might waken us up to how close we actually are to the end. As a 61-year-old, 
My clock says it's seven minutes past six in the evening. That would suggest to me that the best of the day is behind me. Quite a sobering thought, isn't it? So what are we to do with Resurrection Sunday? Of course it should be a day of great rejoicing. No holes barred celebration. Death has been defeated. Salvation has been bought. Our future is secure in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. My aim today is to show you from just two words from Scripture that your man upstairs is a very personal God. Incredibly personal. And he wants you to know he thinks the world of you. You'll find the two words in our text in verse 7. And Peter. Why would Mark include these two words in his account? Surely go and tell the disciples would have been enough. Peter, being one of the twelve, would have known that this would have included him. You know, if any of us were writing that, we not only would have omitted Peter's name, but we might even have went a step further. Go and tell the disciples, accept Peter. After all, wasn't he the failure? Didn't he almost drown when Jesus invited him to walk on the water? Didn't he deny knowing Jesus three times? I go and tell the disciples, but make no mention of it to Peter. If I was writing that narrative, I'd have included names like Pilate, Herod, to make sure they knew their attempts at doing away with Jesus failed miserably. I'd have also included Joseph of Arimathea, informing him that his tomb, his tomb was vacant again. I might even have put John's name in there. After all, he was the only one of the twelve to stand with Jesus right until his death, when all the others fled. And he was now taking care of the mother of the man on the cross. Surely he deserved to know. So why Peter? Why Peter? Well, you'll know Peter was one of the three and the inner circle disciples, along with James and John. They had been with Jesus during special events, such as the transfiguration, when the face of Jesus shone like the sun and his clothes became as white as light. Then Moses and Elijah appeared with him. And had a conversation with Jesus. You can check it out for yourself. Mark chapter 9 later on. These three were also. The only three to have witnessed Jesus. Bringing the daughter of Jairus. Back from the dead. As Luke records in chapter 8 of his gospel. Then in his darkest hour. In the garden of Gethsemane. Jesus asked these three men to. Watch and pray. But in weakness of spirit, they fell asleep. So Peter, James and John had the huge privilege to have been with Jesus in his most glorious moments. But also at the time of his greatest distress. The reason Jesus selected these three men was to prepare them for the leadership roles they were soon to have. In establishing the early church. You'll know from Acts 12. James was the first of the twelve. To be slain. Because of his faith. By Herod. John. Was eventually exiled to the Isle of Patmos. Where Jesus came to him. And gave him the vision. Of the end times recorded for us. In the book of Revelation. He ended his days in Patmos. And he was the last of the twelve to die. But then Peter, well, Peter was going to be the most instrumental servant in the growth of the early church. Jesus reinstated him. Do you remember at the beach barbecue? And said, follow me. To which he did right up until his death. 
There are records throughout the book of Acts of Peter receiving beatings, imprisonment, performing miracles, casting out demons in Jesus' name. But do we, any, do we hear any more of his denials? Absolutely not. It's fairly certain Peter died on a cross. But tradition has it that in a state of utter humility, he requested to be crucified upside down as he felt he wasn't worthy to die in the same manner as a saviour. So these two words, and Peter, are words of affection. I think Jesus had a kind of soft spot for Peter because he was so out there, wasn't he? Every time he opened his mouth, he put his foot in it. In fact, I think the only time Peter opened his mouth was to change feet. You see, Jesus knew that, Pete, that everything Peter said was exactly what everyone else was thinking, but hadn't the nerve to ask. So Peter kind of tees up the subject so Jesus could give the answer to everyone else's silent questions. He was also the only one to come up with the correct response to one of Jesus' questions. You'll recognize this passage from Matthew 16. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked. Who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, you're the Messiah, the Son of the Living God. He had got it right. Bang on, bullseye. And now, after what happened in the week gone by, I believe our Lord knew Peter's heart. He was beating himself up about what he had done in his thrice denial of Jesus and needed a special touch of encouragement and the hope of a clean sheet. And so we commands his angels to say, and Peter. Perhaps there's someone here in this resurrection morning, the resurrection day, who feels they've blown it. Have you an overwhelming sense of, sense of guilt today? This message given on that first Easter Sunday is one of glory, jubilation, celebration of the empty tomb, yes. But it's also a message of the second chance. And who's it for? Broken people, like Peter, like you, like me. Who, not so long ago, pledged to follow Jesus even to the point of dying for him but blew it Easter is surely a message of hope a new start a new beginning a new opportunity a new season and all because of the empty tomb he has risen praise the mighty name of Jesus but also Easter brings a message of hope for you and me, because of these two words, and Peter. Now read this and substitute Peter's name for your own. Go and tell the disciples and your name. How incredibly warm does that feel? Can you imagine hearing this message directly from God? Folks, that's exactly how God speaks to us today. Through his word, the Bible. Peter had failed miserably and most likely felt a heavy load of guilt. But that morning, on hearing his name from the two Marys, as they delivered the angelic message, must have been like a mountain lifted off his back. He knew right then that second chances were available for the waste of space he thought he was. What an incredibly gracious God we have in the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Isn't that so typical of him? To pick people like that. Who would have picked a murderer to lead his people out of slavery in Egypt? But God did it with Moses. And his second chance came when he went over to see why the wee hedge was on fire. And what do we read in Exodus 3 verse 4? God used his name. Moses. Moses. Or what about Joshua, the weakling? Or David, the adulterer, murderer? Or Jonah, the runner? Or you, or me? Today, if you're consumed with an overwhelming sense of guilt, something only you and your Lord knows about, put your name in the blank. I know there's a second chance, a golden opportunity. Go tell the disciples and George, Valerie, Sharon, Peter, whatever your name is. Seize the second chance opportunity. You might not get another one. In closing then, the message of the, to the two Marys was make sure you tell Peter he's out of the sun bin. He's back in the pitch. How does he know this for sure? Well, his new name is used. You see, this was Simon the fisherman. But when Jesus met him, he gave him a new name. From now on, you'll be called Peter, the rock. And on this rock, I will build my church. Simon the fisherman was in the past. The old career was gone. He was Peter, the evangelist now. This was not good news for Peter. It was amazing news for Peter. God saw a huge potential in him. Even after it shamefully let him down. Do you believe in a God like that? I'd say the chances are because you're here today that you do. But do you believe that God believes in you? He does, you know. Because of this day, folks, you too are out of the sun bin. You're back in the pitch. Give him the failures of your life on this resurrection day. He's got a job for you to do. I suppose the only question left is, how are you going to respond to grace like that? Let's pray together. <coughs> Heavenly Father, we're full of hope today as we celebrate the glorious resurrection of your dear Son, the Lord Jesus. We bless you for defeating sin, death, and Satan by rising from the dead. Thank you, Lord, for what this means to each one of us and that you see us as righteous in your eyes because you see us through the spilled life blood of Jesus. Father, move in the hearts of each one of us on this special day to seize the second chance opportunity you're offering us right now and to come to you with a repentant heart Forgive our sins and accept us into your royal family for now and forevermore we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's close our service with this lovely peace. Thine be the glory.
He is not dead. He has risen. Go tell the disciples and your name. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you on this resurrection day and forevermore. And the people of God said, Amen.